I think it's the fourth attempt now to complete this uh, verse. It's um, wonderful commentaries of the Das Babaji and beautiful uh, feelings and realizations shared by Gurudev and all the brothers and sisters who have uh, been merging into this verse. Um, I feel today we will complete it uh, and uh, so I'm very much uh, happy that uh, I can one more time uh, uh, read uh, to all of you together for the pleasure of, uh, of our dear Gurudev and all the devotees. So just to, to again um, read this verse and then uh, continue with the commentary from where we kind of uh, stopped last time. And I remember that Gurudev at the end of last week's uh, sharing was giving us a, some homework to meditate on a specific uh, commentary and we will then continue there and 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 um, then relish uh, what uh, will uh, appear from that onwards harupa manjari sakhi pranayena devim tvat bahudata bhuja valarim ayatakshim paschat aham kalita kama taranga rangam Nashami Kim Hari Vibhushita Keli Kunjam. O my dear friend Rupa Manjari, when can I walk behind you? When you lovingly take wide eyed Goddess Radhika, who is immersed in waves of desire, to the play grove that is decorated by Sri Hari as she holds her wine-like arm with yours. So I continue where we kind of stopped last time. Right, Kuranga Sundar? Yeah. Ranga my Swamini floats on the waves of Kama, holding your Rupa Manjari's arm, while I, Tulsi, walk anxiously behind her, watching her stumbling gait, afraid that she will trip or fall out of eagerness to meet Mohan, and ready to hold her then. Uh, just one feeling came uh, in this uh, uh, when Sh Swamini is walking and holding Rupa's arm while Tulsi and the other Manjuris walk anxiously behind and then they watch her afraid that she would trip or fall and they're ready to hold her then. So we often hear that Swamini has this very, very intimate, dear and loving relationship to the Manjuris and Gurudev often describes her as the mama who takes care of the babies. But here when she's on Abhisar, the roles are a bit reversed. Now the manjuris are so um, anxious. They feel like if she's, if they are not there, she might trip or fall and then who will take care of her? It's like when a mother watches a child playing or, you know, uh, driving a bicycle. The mother is always watching very anxiously that nothing happens to her child that she makes it home or she makes it on, their, on, her, on her play, but nothing happens to her. So here the, I was just feeling that when the Manjuris are walking behind Radharani, they know how tender she is and how eager she is to meet Mohan, that she's also not in control of herself anymore. So they need to be also behind her to catch her just in case she would trip or fall and 
Asarupa is holding, she's holding her arm, means that she has fully trust in Rupa, that Rupa will lead her, will bring her, sorry, will bring her to the Kunja. When Swamini sees a blackish tamar tree on the way, she mistakes it for Mohan. And when she sees a golden wine entwining this tree, she mistakes it for a rival gopi embracing him. You will help her out of her illusion, but I will help Swamini meet with Sham in a kunja house which he adorns with his own bodily luster. You will help her out of her illusion, but I will help Swamini meet with Sham in a kunja house, which he adorns with his own bodily luster. Gurudev, this means that without the manjuris, the Abhisar can never be complete. Because Swamini, sometimes she sees a tree, Tamar tree, then she starts embracing that tree. Sometimes she sees another golden creeper and she thinks it's a other gopi, he's with the other gopi. So it becomes, the Abhisar becomes very difficult for her without the manjuris. The words Kama Taranga Rangam apply here to billowing waves of Madan Ras, the pinnacle of Prema, and not to material lust. The Tantras say. Prema eva goparamanam kama iti agamat pratam. The pure love of the gopis is known as lust because the external activity appears to be the same. Thank you. Okay, now? Now, yes. Yes. Oh, right. so can I you repeat? Can you repeat? The tantras say from that mm -hmm. sentence, please. Yeah. The tantra, yeah. The tantra say, "Prema eva gopara manam kama iti agamat pratam." The pure love of the gopis is known as lust because the external activity appears to be the same. Nevertheless, there is complete absence here of desire for personal sense enjoyment. That's a deep paradoxical secret. Sahaja Gopira Prema Nahe Prakrita Kama Kama Krida Same Tore Kohe Kama Nama Chitane Charitamrita says, in this world, it is also noticeable that some activities appear the same externally, but have different targets. For instance, two persons may be picking flowers in a garden. One of them is doing it to gratify his own nose, and the other is doing it to worship the Lord. The first person binds himself to this illusory world by striving for sense gratification. Two persons may be picking flowers in a garden. One of them is... Yes. One of them is doing it to gratify his own nose and the other is doing it to worship 
the Lord. The first person binds himself to this illusory world by striving for sense gratification, while the other unfolds prema by working within the realm of the Lord's Swarup Shakti, named Bhagavat Bhakti. Gurudev, last time you said this is a very deep meaning and we should meditate on this. Maybe Goranga Sundar, you, you could help a bit in this to make us more understand what is the this externally it appears the same. Also the gopis activities externally appear, but there's a a very, very deep difference in doing it for my own self gratification or for the pleasure of my Ishtade, my Lord. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. This is very, very crucial point to understand difference between prema, pure, selfless love, and the karma, actually, different activities for our own pleasure, to please our own senses. So it's very nicely here said that pure love of the gopis is known as a lust because of external activity appears to be the same. So outside, if we are just looking from outside appearance, gopis are behaving like ordinary girls who are very lusty for their boyfriend. But to stay on that level is a big mistake. We should understand that those personalities in the form of gopis are completely free from selfish desire to please their own senses. Their hearts are flowing in the selfless, pure love to satisfy their love. And Radhika, who is the main of all, all the gopis, actually showing through her own example this difference from external activity and inner attitude. <laughs> And our acharyas are talking in their scriptures that great difference between prema and kama, lust, is like uh, iron and gold. But someone who is on bodily consciousness of life very easily he can mistake it. And Acharyas are trying to teach us about this great difference. Radhika's desire is to fulfill all Mohan's, Krishna's desires. She wants to give him a pleasure. When we say pleasure, it's not like saying he wants only to satisfy him. To give a pleasure to someone 
means to give him the pleasure for all his senses. So all existence of Shimati Radharani, like a main gopi, is meant to give him the pleasure to all his senses, it means to all his heart. And Baba is staying here and giving example of two persons for our clear understanding. Externally, uh, Atulji, Atulji, yes, thank you. From external point of view, person who is taking the flowers to satisfy his nose is doing the same activity like devotee who is picking these flowers to satisfy the senses of his beloved Ishtadi. External activity is the same. But attitude is completely different. And result is also completely different. Person who is picking the flowers, trying to satisfy his own nose or sense of smelling, is becoming the slave of karma. And he is completely drowned in this samsara, circle of birth and death. Shortly to say, he is becoming more and more and more conditioned. But devotee, who has completely another attitude, his desire is to pick the flowers for the pleasure of Ishtadev slowly is awakening his dormant love in his heart. So, I remember Prabhupada also gave one very nice example, practical example from daily life, which we can also apply. Also, this example is also very nice and clear. He said there's the two persons who are working in the factory and they are standing on the same machine. They are doing the same job in the same machine. One is devotee and one is ordinary materialistic person. Looking from outside, they are doing the same job, they will receive the same salary, you know, they are producing certain stuffs, same stuffs, but one is doing for himself, for maintaining himself or his family, but another is doing because this is instruction of his spiritual master. So by doing the same job, one is staying in the circle of karma and another by fulfilling desire of spiritual master, doing the same job like the previous one is trying to satisfy, to please his spiritual master, but fulfilling his instruction. And result of that is that by doing this job, like instruction of spiritual master, he is advancing in the, his spiritual life. And his dormant pure love 
in the heart slowly is awakening. Why Baba is giving here this example and with flowers and Prabhupada is giving these examples in the factory because they know that sadhakas has to do many things in their daily life but they are trying to give the proper instructions and show the way how one ac same activity can be used to advance in a spiritual life. And personally, I think this is a very practical example. And removing many doubts, because all of us, we have to do something to maintain. But which kind of attitude we have and under whose instructions we are doing. This is a great difference. So in the same manner, activities of the gopis are meant for, generally say, for Krishna's pleasure, for the pleasure of his senses, not for themselves. And this is the sign of pure, transcendental love, which can be exchanged only on transcendental platform, in a transcendental bodies, in a transcendental relationship. And Kama sometimes is mentioned that gopis are flowing on the waves of Kama, Radhika is especially, Taranga Rangini, she is running, she is flowing like a Ganges on these waves of Kama, because looking from outside, she looks like a girl who is crazy out of love, but not to satisfy her senses. She is crazy to satisfy Krishna's senses. And in the same manner, her manjaris, her kinkaris are, are running behind her. Like Guru Parampara. Rupa manjari, Rati Manjari, Manjari Manjari Manjari, Guru Manjari, and finally Nava Manjari, the new one. So they are running, but not to satisfy themselves. They are running to support Srimati Radhika and to bring her in the Konja where Mohan is waiting. So whenever we listen about these subjects, we should understand and know and remember this difference between prema, pure transcendental love, and activities which are result of this pure love, because these kind of activities are also pure activities. When attitude is pure, then activity is pure. When attitude is polluted, then activity is also polluted and becomes materialistic. But with attitude, desires are pure, full of love, automatically all activities or other emotions are pure. And we can see also here how something which is very low in material world, like a karma, like a lust, it's very low. When it comes with transcendental 
feelings and love automatically becomes transformed. Outside looking is the same, but with touch, with transcendent love, pure love, it becomes transformed like a fear. Fear in material world is very negative emotion, strong negative emotions, which can destroy person in life. But we can see when fear, uh, same feeling of fear appears in connection with the pure love, <laughs> then this fear is the part of prema which is increasing more and more and more and more loving, sweet relationship. What will happen with my beloved? When he will come? Maybe he is in some problem. You know, this is some kind of fears. But which kind? These kind of fears are increasing and increasing and increasing the pure love. And this is the power of transcendental prema, transcendental love. That all emotions which are coming in contact with prema, pure love, are becoming transformed and ultimately dormant love in the heart of devotee is awakening, awakening and becoming more stronger and stronger. When we approach meditation on Lila like this, knowing and feeling this and accepting these differences, then automatically sadaka will also flow in these waves of loving pastimes. I said something. Rade. Yes, Rade, Rade. Just a comment on Dandavat Dual. Thank you so much for this explanation so clear about the difference of position from internal position and external position. <clears throat> what remains uh, for me very mysterious is that in the Leela, in the transcendental world of the Leela, there is no external position. And so, why does, why do we talk about, why does Baba talk about the difference between the external and the internal position? All positions are within the spiritual. Everything Mantris are doing is done with complete and surrendered heart. So it's, um, I, I say this in the form of a, of a question, can, can you help to understand? And this links to an even more really beautiful mystery for me that came a little bit earlier, a few lines above where, and Gopinath commented on it, the, the Mandaris are there to help um, Radha to avoid the illusions. Because, and Gopinath correctly commented, because she's seeing her Mohan everywhere. And she mustn't become confused and distracted. She must find her way to the, to the Nikunj and, uh, and for her meeting with Mohan and mustn't be confused. But what it seems in, to me is that there is no illusion. That Radha has no illusion. And above all, we all understand this principle, this, this idea that when we love perfectly, we see the object of our love everywhere. So what I want to say, and maybe I want to ask you this as a question too, Gaura, is it an illusion when Radha sees Mohan in every tree? Isn't this just as real 
as the reality of Mohan that's sitting in the Nikunj waiting. Radhe. Radhe, thank you very much, Radhaji. So, as I understand, Baba is giving, first of all, this kind of example, and other Acharyas are also giving this kind of example, because they know that Sadakas will listen about this loving, amorous pastimes. Sadakas will listen. And he wants to clear in their consciousness difference between Kama and Prima. So when they are meditating, he is warning them, don't meditate from your senses and your materialistic mind. Understand that this is transcendental love and transcendental pastimes. Because these loving pastimes between Radha and Krishna are Narvada Lila, like a human. And it's very easy for materialistic mind not sufficiently purified to slip away from this transcendence and to start to enjoy with his own senses. And Baba is saying, when you notice this, just remember that this is not materialistic pastime, like a human. It said like a human. So it means that it's not a human, but it looks like a human. <laughs> so this is a little paradox. And you said, so it means she is in illusion, but she is not in illusion. Why she said in illusion? Because it looks like il illusion in one sense. But on another sense, it is illusion under the Yoga Maya, not Mahamaya. And this kind of illusion under the Yoga Maya is very beneficial for nourishing intensity of amorous pastimes. Otherwise, everything will be neutral. And we cannot approach and meditate and think about Lila from neutral position. Because this is just information like, you know, knowledge or something like that. But if we understand that pastimes are covered with yoga maya, which brings Krishna, Radhika, all Rajavasis in so-called transcendental illusion, then we can understand that this kind of illusion helps them to intensify their emotions. Because without these emotions, uh, uh, sorry, without this illusion, transcendental illusion, there will be no pastimes. Krishna will be always situating in his supreme godly position, and Radhika also will be situated in her supreme godly position. But in Vraja, especially in Vraja, they rejected all these Aishwarya aspects, and they voluntarily want to be under the illusion, because in that way, they can exchange their paraki above. So this illusion is a servant of their paraki above, forbidden love, Madhurya rasa. This illusion is also the servant of Vatsalya rasa, Sakya rasa is a servant. So this is the mystery, this is Achintya. And we have to meditate and relish that, not from neutral position. Just go, I also want to be in that kind of illusion. <laughs> to run after 
my beloved Swamini who is in illusion. Otherwise, all rasa is spoiled. Because this kind of illusion intensifies Adbuta, this uh, chanting, feelings, like a human. And we sadhakas, because of that, we can meditate. It's very familiar to us. We can feel it. We can make some parallels. But Baba is warning us, be aware, this is not ordinary kama. This is activity of prema. This is my attempt. Try. Sorry if I. Buddha, we are, it was really a very um, beautiful reflection you had now. Um, I'm trying to follow this. Uh, what you you were putting out there with, if there's any internal or external in the lila, and I see it as you see. You no, know, it's it's all internal, but it appears for us sadhakas to properly meditate on the Leela, as Guranga Sundar pointed out. So there is also a technique or a practice how to meditate on the Leela, how to meditate on this very intimate, confidential pastimes. So from which position we should meditate on those uh, Leelas of Radha Krishna and, and of course as our position as Manjuris. But I also loved this uh, reflection, Uda, what you just said about the illusion, like is Swamini in illusion or is it real for her? And I was just trying to meditate on that and I felt that, wow, for her it's real. For her, she sees Mohan in the tree and she, she runs to the tree and maybe she would just stay with the tree the whole night, you know, and have very sweet conversations. And, you know, like uh, hugging the tree, maybe kissing the tree because she sees, she's so, it's the perfect moment of love, I feel, no? How more intense can love be if you see your beloved in everything, no? Like Gurudev always says, Jit Deko Dit Shamai, wherever you go, wherever I go, wherever I see you. And I just had a very small uh, experience in my life um, some years back. We had a very in intense summer months with Gurudev. And when we left and we were, you know, when you're with, with Gurudev, often you're very sleep deprived, you know, like if you are trying to follow his rhythm, you don't have much sleep. So I remember we left Vrindavan and we went to the airport and, and it was so weird because in so many instances, I felt I saw Gurudev in the airport. I saw him in the plane. I saw somebody in a pink shirt, and I thought, "This is Gurudev," you know. And I looked at Gopi and said, "Like my God, it's like you know." Then I felt like, "My God, how how intense love can be," you know. Like for my Gurudev, now I'm speaking. But then, if you put it into how intense the love of the divine couple is, you know, this is just a mere small reflection of that you know but you see everywhere and it's an illusion you know but the feeling is real no that's what i felt like i felt him you know even it, it was not him that that person was but the feeling like he was really present so i just this just came to me this this small uh, story in my life and then i was thinking that how real it is for her you know and so then the mandris taking her out from her illusion, I was feeling like they know that it's she's seeing the tree, but they know that the feeling of is real and they want to help her to reach there so it can be this perfect moment of anurag, of love, you know, because she is already in anurag, right, Goranga? So she's already in anurag with the tree, but now she, we have to help her to get to the real uh, object of her love. And uh, I don't know, if that made sense at all, it was just a, a, a small feeling which came up. Thank you so much, Uda Bhaiya, like for for um, for steering this. It's very beautiful to meditate on. Thank you.
go on or if if we have some someone from from the devotees okay guru is saying go on okay um he's signaling like this okay where are we it is well known that the lord is not captured by mere lust which is not attended with pure love for him seeing that the lord is controlled to the utmost by the gopika's lust it can be easily understood that this lust is the pinnacle of deep love therefore jiva goswami writes in bhakti sandarbha this amorous love is called kam or lust because it resembles lust but the mundane cupid called smara is different from this for many differences can be seen between the two usually the word kam is used to indicate desire or lust and preeti or prema the attitude of wanting to please the lord therefore although the activities of lust and love appear to be the same the desire to please oneself has been called lust and the desire to please mohan has been called pure love from this it is easily understood that the lust of the gopis who are free from desires for personal sense pleasure is the pinnacle of pure love so we should understand kama and pure love or prema and very often in the scriptures is said priti and we know from bhagavad gita bajatam priti purvakam dadadi buddhi yogantam when person is practicing his bhajan with priti pure love then the dadi buddhi yogantam spiritual intelligence appears slowly in his heart but which kind of intelligence is not ordinary materialistic intelligence it's devotional intelligence which is full of devotional feelings so gopi but to to come on that stage we need a lot of mercy ocean of mercy we need or maybe one drop of mercy because we should we have to become free from this mundane cupid gopinath said can you repeat this gopinath ji yes <clears throat> but but the mundane cupid called smara is different from this for many differences can be seen between the two usually the word kama is used to indicate desire or lust and preeti or prema the attitude of wanting to please the lord 
this kind of attitude is the essence of prema, actually, pure love, to please Ishtadev, mm -hmm. then to serve Ishtadev, mm -hmm. and ultimately to have direct mm -hmm. relationship, direct meeting with Rish. Because through this direct meeting, direct vision, I can fulfill my desire to please Ishtadev, his desires, by serving him. And to come on that stage, we need the mercy and first think, which is important, to be free by the mercy, is to be free from this smara, mundane cupid. And I just remember now, I don't know, from saints of Raj or saints from Begal, in one of the, these life stories, it said, like instruction, one Baba gave instruction to the disciple, first die, and then practice smarana, bhaja. Gurudev is saying many times also like this. So when Gopinath was reading this, and he said smara, we know smarana is deep, is meditation. But for this real meditation, there are two conditions in this world. Marana, to die, and Smara, to be free from Kama. Then, Smarana can slowly become deep meditation. What does it mean, die? Bodily consciousness. And with bodily consciousness, Sadaka will be free from Smara when his bodily consciousness is. Be becoming spiritual consciousness, in spiritual identity. He is becoming free from materialistic karma. And then his heart is ready for smarana. And this is the two blockages. You can see in the beginning, smara, <laughs> lust, materialistic lust, is a bondage, is a blockage, and bodily consciousness of life has to be removed, has to die, to disappear. Marana. So we need Kripa for that. And all mantras are helping us and following the footsteps. But if what you say is true here, Baya, I don't know. And I don't, doubt, I don't doubt it's true. But if this but, is true, that means also that we must die. What also must die is our mind as part of bodily consciousness. And the consequence is that prema doesn't contain mind. Prema isn't a way of thinking, I'm going to love really big, really high. Prema isn't an attitude. Prema isn't a good idea. Prema is a being, a way of being. 
It's one that's so high that we don't even realize it. We can't, it's, it's not, we don't think about it, we just live it. We just feel it only. And it's where every atom of our soul is dedicated to, to loving. There's no room for thought. There's no room for wondering if this is a good idea. It's, it's total, I, all our being is, is loving. There's nothing else happening. So the ego has to die too, is what you're saying. Yes, false identification, that I am this body. When I say I'm this body, it's not only this gross body, but actually I'm not this mind, materialistic mind, I'm not in materialistic intelligence, and especially I'm not this materialistic ego. So this is the dying, but mind can help us to practice this process of dying by mentally conceiving the spiritual identity. Hello? Through the bhajan. And this is the process. Because ultimately, like you said, when person attains perfection, his mind and heart are in the same tune, spiritual tune, citta vrit. And there is no difference of his heart, feelings, and his spiritual mind. There is no difference between his spiritual mind and spiritual feelings, because he is situated in his Swarup or stay above. So you have this beautiful, I was just reading this morning, right at the end of Bhagavad Gita, very famous, you know it, I'm sure. Krishna says to Arjuna, okay, now you've got to forget everything I told you and surrender. So all the intellectual knowledge you've acquired through this whole book, Forget it all, erase, and just surrender. Yesterday, in Japanese, Zoom Sangha, we were reading and talking about Gurudev's words. And he said in the beginning, we have doubts, and because of that, we need to remove this doubt that Krishna is a God. And we need the scriptures, we need the knowledge information which will convince us about that. But when the doubts are removed, devotee a sign, okay, you are Supreme Personality of Godhead, I am spiritual soul, I accept everything, I don't have any doubts. But now I want, I understand the essence of all scriptures. That only way how I can approach to you is through your love. And I'm taking shelter of your love. And please give me mercy. Sarva Dharma Paritaj. Please give me a mercy to approach to your beloved, to your love. And I want to be servant of your love. And I'm not interesting anymore about all this philosophical yeah. knowledge, jnana, arguments, logic. Who wants, let's be happy with this. Because Prabhupada says, one grain of pure love, one grain of prema contains all the shastras, all the books, all the knowledge is contained in one moment of pure Love of God. Love of God. Love. Love of God.
Continue. Swamini goes on Abhisar holding Sri Rupa Manjari's hand. Waves of lust are manifest in each of her limbs. Her passionate love for Mohan is like a wave which is manifest through the gesture of her eyes, her gait, and her words. It's a strong desire to meet him, but it is all for Mohan's pleasure. Anxiously, she asks Rupa, how long will it take before I can see him again? Oh, tell me, Rupa, how far is it still? Ah, uh -huh. how eagerly he must be sitting there waiting for me. She's so worried for him, Gurudev. How long will it take before I can see him again? Tell me, Rupa, how far is it still? Ah, how eagerly he must be sitting there waiting for me. There is a delight in separation, although it brings suffering. Such delight cannot be found in this world. Unless feelings of separation arise, there can be no awakening of a strong desire to attain the beloved. Therefore, the first target of the practicing devotee must be love in separation. Unless there is eagerness born from a feeling of want, one cannot become qualified to experience anything. Unless feelings of separation arise, there can be no awakening of a strong desire to attain the beloved. Therefore, the first target of the practicing devotee must be love in separation. I'm a little puzzled here. How can I have a strong desire? No, how can I feel pangs of separation if I've never ever met her Gurudev? Yeah, is it the feeling of love makes suffering? Feeling of love is so intense. Love is there. So I feel something. So first I have to learn how to love. Ah. That is Sambandha. And come to the feeling. And this come in my spiritual 
जीवा स्प्रिट दैट्स ए सोल एंड दैट सोल कैन फील दैट when we want to feel with my bodily identification that is my profit of material cover but we cannot feel that one that material body can only feel to enjoy myself my senses only i can enjoy myself i cannot give the pleasure to the lord i cannot give the pleasure to radhika in the service of her. and she also is not she is totally spiritual na huh? in the form of the love she moving for that rat after so not working now just running out of battery sorry but i understand gurudev saying is that we all feel separation every jiva but we have to realize jiva but we have to realize that it's rather mohan that we're separated from yeah and we have to come out from the my body to the jiva consciousness ha ah. sadhana we have to do that is sadhana to to avideha to my jiva consciousness that jiva will give sarup of mercy of radhika that we are the manjari of radhika to feel and see this and understand this. that jiva can feel but this body cannot feel because he knows only my enjoyment subject his practice is only this so we have to feel this in going to my sarup and jiva then is a clear cut and that sadhana we have to do to leave there that sadhana is very important and this our false ego is never living till this body is there he is very attached with the body Uh, when we die then is living false ego this is the problem of false ego. ahankar that is ahankar to to practice to live in my sarup and sarup where in my jiva in my spirit my spiritual 
you are talking about the mind also what i am doing in my sadhak deha material body in my false ego manobritti means mind is moving in that direction the circle of mind is moving in that direction and when we bring in my spiritual body or jiva body then mind is start moving in that circle so that time mind also change इमेजिएटली जम्प आउट आउटसाइड so beautifully baba mentioning i am listening this time vinod baba so much philosophy is giving so much tattva vichar giving and baba is giving so easy way in this way that you only practice so i take the one juicy thing that we never leave our ahankar for sigo till my the it not go to the graveyard body is is not going to leave me when he is not going to leave ahankar then why to stay here why not to do sadhana that we know that there is a jiva tattva and my sarup can we stay only there if we want that we have to do sadhana to do there and this sadhana he say how i will test humbleness service mood kindness is coming to me or not and one thing he suggests us to this sadhana we have to do when we come to the jiva consciousness then radha rani can give sarup to that by the mercy but we have to make the desire by doing sadhana is this material but if we not do sadhana or bhajan or intense bhajan he said no intense we need because without intense we will not be disciplined because we are living we will not die from here mm-hmm. 
इंटेंस लालसा माना इंटेंस डिजायर फॉर दिस डे इट विल इट विल बी चेंज We have to do this sadhana in my sadhak there. And if any material desires are there, is not possible. Then we will. It will bring keep you in material body. Because that will be fulfilled by material thing. So, say, who is totally full, full timer, then he can be intense. Or who is in grasasam, slowly, slowly, he can work for that. But this is important. Slowly, slowly, he has to develop this intense intensity for developing. This movement, moving from here to there. If not, we will always forget my spiritual identification. We will talk from outside. We will think from outside. We will calculate from outside. What do you think? I think I'm uh, too. Uh, I'm a little too enthusiastic about getting rid of my mind. Slowly, <laughs> <laughs> slowly. Sure. Morning class also was this, and then Kishori was reading some Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada, and both was the similar. So it was so effective. I cannot say you. very beautiful happened in mock class. Yeah, I was there at that time. I was there. Yes. It was so beautiful. I don't know how it comes to me. Hmm. Prabhupada Mahasi, and then something uh, Mahatma reached. From the last of the month, because I now say, Guru Kripa happened that it happens. I want to listen now that subject. What happens? It, it was really beautiful. Ah, huh? now go on. You are there. I see that. Unless there is eagerness born from a feeling of want, yeah, this is the problem. We are not eager for that. Yeah. One cannot become qualified to experience anything. You see, eager for my sarupaiti. The devotee should not forget this when becoming absorbed in the bliss of meditation. A person like me. Feels no spiritual want at all. I'm having fun. My belly is full. Everything's okay. The practicing devotee will feel ashamed when he realizes the difference between his careless way of life and the activities of the Goswamis. Shivan Mahaprabhu 
stood behind the Garuda pillar and viewed Lord Jagannath from there, bathing in his own tears. Garuda stambera tole ache eko nima kole, shekala varilo ashro jale. Shigora Sundra is Radha Bhav Dhai Bhava Dhyaya enriched by Radha's mood. Seeing himself meeting Krishna at Kurukshetra as a beggar woman. Although Mohan is her all in all, Swamini could not embrace him and hold him to her heart. What pain, what an anguish. Boundless bliss agitates the ocean of anguish as she thinks to herself, go to Braj, I want to see you in Braj. Raguna Das is the embodiment of Sriman Mahaprabhu's grace. His love in separation is natural. The devotee will greatly benefit by hearing and chanting about the stream of his worship. Together with Tulsi and Rupa, Swamini arrives at the gate of the Kunja Hari Vibhushita Keli Kunja. Sri Hari single handedly decorated the twisting place where Rupa and Tulsi bring Swamini and is waiting there for her. Radhika is known as Vasaka Sajika a girl who decorates the trysting place awaiting her hero. But now the situation is reversed. Hari made a sitting place for her with flowers moistened by his own loving tears. The kunja is adorned by Hari's form, qualities, and craftsmanship. How expert he is in decorating. It is as if he decorates all four sides of the kunja with his pure love for his priyaji, thinking, here, I will sit with my Priyaji. This is the expertise of Prema Seva, the mutual service of love. When Swamini enters the Kunja with Rupa and Tursi, she is amazed. First of all, it is the Kunja which delights Cupid, and then it is also decorated by the very hands of the transcendental, youthful Cupid of Vrindavan. Swamini asks, Sham, who decorated this kunja? Hari says, who knows? You understand. Srimati then, you have done it? Nobody else can decorate like this. You have done all this work knowing that I would come. I should have been here with you to help you. 
Today she's very munificent. It is Swamini's Hari who steals her heart with his loving expertise. Two teardrops trickle from Radhika's eyes. How affectionately Sham helps her onto her sitting place. How much love he has in his heart as he sits at her soft feet and takes them to his chest, asking her, how have you come all the way here with these tender feet? The ground of Raja is so hard. He repeatedly looks I will do it. No, Yes. Yes. Sham helps her onto her sitting place. Uh, How much love he has in his heart as he sits at her soft feet and takes them to his chest, asking her, how have you come all the way here with these tender feet? The ground of brudge is so hard. He repeatedly looks at Swamini's lotus feet that are great by dust. Dulcy understands the mood and brings a golden pitcher with water and a golden bowl. While Tulsi pours out the water, Sham washes Swamini's feet and dries them off with his yellow dhoti, while tears trickle from his eyes. Without the mercy of the Acharyas, this cannot be experienced. By their grace, the divine remembrance of this pastime will arise within the heart. The mind must be absorbed in this subject. Saying Gurudev that without the mercy of the Acharyas, this cannot be experienced. By their grace, the divine remembrance of this pastime will arise within the heart. The mind must be absorbed in this subject. Yeah, in the physical body, mind absorbed in material subject. And here, mind will observe in this past. This is true identity. Separate. But it needs the mercy, no? Yeah. And our sadhana and mercy. When we, we are greedy for this, that mercy comes. <laughs> Greed has to come. Like a baby has to cry, then mother takes in the lap. No? Ma baby cannot jump to the lap. But mercy is taking mother's lap. But crying is a mind age work. No? Baby works to cry. Then mother takes on lap. 
and open the breast and feed the, put the nipple in the mouth. This is the mercy. But crying is my work. That is sadhana. That's sadhana we have to do. How to cry? Cry much. Bhajan Kriya. Bhajan. Intense desire for coming there. Living all the time there. Not visiting, living there. We visit. We know that. We like it. But we want to live there. When visiting is so beautiful, when we start living, what will be happen? I am still visiting, not living there. After listening, I want to do intense that we can not visiting, try to live some time more. See that. So, by the mercy of our two acharyas, Kopinat Bhaya and Garanga, we can feel more and go deeper and visit. Yeah. Yeah, hold the body. Right. Yeah, Nanda Maharaj is not saying something. I miss her words. I am hearing you, I am hearing you, you and Gopi Maharaj. Jayananda Maharaj, what is happening? Jai, we want to listen to you. Jai, oh. I want to listen from you. Jayananda help us here, how to understand this without the mercy of the acharyas this cannot be experienced and only by their grace the leelas will arise within the heart the remembrance of this pastime so i also i i need uh, your mercy i need uh, for crying. Slowly, slowly understanding, but still I not uh, into, I cannot live still. And uh, Gora Gomina Sai Maharaji was uh, saying, I'm opening crying school. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And then, so, and sometimes he's crying actually. And so much greed is coming. And uh, one day he disclosed his secret. He has a Shiksha Guru. So means she, she had, even Gorakamani Sami has Shiksha Guru. She's, uh, it seems she, uh, he's getting the mercy from Acharyas. So, we also, we need to beg the mercy of Acharyas, especially our Guru Dev and other Vaishnavas. And because this crying, I feel, crying means no other desire. Yeah, oh, yeah, my dear. Other desires. Yeah. So, when but the is is playing with the toys, then he cries. But no other desire, no interesting thing now. Only to you, Mama. My over, all desires are over. Wow. 
So this is Gurudev saying one pointed. Crying means one pointed. Goal is fixing. So that's, I want to learn from you, Gurudev and Gopinata Bhaiya, Gauranga Sandra. Now my health is good. I want to listen more and more. <laughs> Still I am visiting, not living there. How beautiful Sham is sitting by Swamini's feet. Swamini lifts Mohan up and seats him next to her. How beautiful Sham looks with these loving tears in his eyes, holding her cheek on his cheek. Swamini asks Sham, why do you love me so much? I could not do anything for you. I have so many shortcomings. How many qualified girls are there, not always waiting for you? How you could leave them all for an unfortunate girl like me? Shab stares at Swamini's face. What he has gotten that he's unaware of. Their bodies are studded with big goosebumps and many sweat drops. And they stare at each other while tears flow from their eyes without interruption. Their limbs are filled with joy from each other's touch. Who can experience the waves of love? They embrace each other and stare at each other while Swamini holds her head on Shyam's left shoulder and keeps her right arm behind his back. Their mouths are adorned with soft and tender smiles that do not seem to end. Rupa and Tulsi stare without blinking at the sweetness of the Yugalaki shore that look like the moon and the blue Uvalaya lotus together. They resemble a golden wine embracing a tamar tree or the lightning entering a fresh rain cloud. There is no comparison to Radha and Mohan's forms. They resemble a blue lotus flower and the moon in one place. They're both absorbed in rustic ecstasy and Ananta Das cannot find the limits of this. Suddenly, the vision vanishes. It is as if the eyes have become white and Sri Raghunath Das weeps, prays, and laments as follows. Shri Rupa Manjari Devi Shada Seva Mrite Dubi Shuki Koro Shri Radha Mohane Tuya Kore Kunjeshwari Nija Puja Vallari Samar Pila Priti Swabhave O oh, Rupa Manjari Devi, you are always immersed in a nectar ocean of devotional service. 
always pleasing Sri Sri Radha Mohan. In a loving mood, Kunjeshwari Radha places her wine like arm in your hand. Apa Rupa Nava Gori Hari Chita Chamata Kori Anurage Aruna Nayana Krishna Darshana Age Prema Bhitaranga Dube Tanumana Sarvindriya Gana Your incomparable gold and youthful form astonishes Hari's heart. When you see Mohan before you with your passionate reddish eyes, you are floating on waves of love with your body, your mind, and all your senses. Hey Sri Radhe Madishwari, Vilasha Bhushana Puri, Keli Rasha Samarata Range Avisare Kogodhani Loya Yaibo to me Harivi Bushita Keli Kunje O my Ishwari Shirade, you are wearing all the ornaments of your pastimes floating on the waves of the rasa of playful skirmishes as I take you on Abhisar love journey to the Kunja, <coughs> which is decorated by Hari. Here ends the verse 68. Astonishing. Wow. Yes. yes. How fortunate Guru Dev to Manjari saying, I take you on Abhisar wow. to the Kunja. When can this become our mantra, Guru Dev? When we start later our Sarupanjali from dance in dance the last Thank you very much. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you, Gopinath, Jananda Maharaj. That it happened to me also. I need all of you, Vaishnavas, blessings. This is only thing without Vaishnava Kripa not happening. Guru and Vaishnava and Mahajan Kripa. Yeah. 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 Yeah.